and I really am scrambling for heroes that sacred of course if I go off their history they would usually pick his bloodseeker pretty close to here and bloodseeker does play decently well into invoker you just completely immobilize the hero and then sort of wait until after the rupture is done to then pick him off but they need more jump I think if they go for that bloodseeker I think they are going to struggle Ooh. and that's some jump so they're flexing around a little bit because I believe now this tiny might be forced into Michael's hands. But this Void Spirit, I'm very, very skeptical of the Void Spirit. Of course, you have a Spirit versus a lineup that doesn't have a lot of stuns. We've seen this before. We specifically saw it in the no ping match where Dark Mega was able to get on that Ember Spirit. And then the enemy team had no stuns. So he just avoided them for the entire game. And having a Medusa on your team, avoiding the enemy team does seem like the smart play. But Ember is just a little bit better than Void Spirit. There's a big reason why we don't really see this hero anymore. So I'm a little bit hesitant to say I like this Void Spirit pick, but we'll have to see what he's going to be able to manage, or manage at least versus the Invoker. Don't really need to worry about EMP anymore. You might get clipped by it a few times here and there if you see the Dissimulate already uh, used. But aside from that, Void Spirit will be slowed down a lot less than this tiny mid. All right. That does at least give them a better matchup there. And Unfortunately for Inf Infamous, as you were mentioning, the Ember might have sort of played a little bit better for them. It's a hero uh, that they actually had banned out themselves in Phase 2 because you are going up against Analog, who is very, very comfortable uh, on that sort of Ember play. So you tried to make that ban to take it out of his hands. Now you don't have it available for it yourself. As we move into the final phase of the bans, Infamous removing the DK, but also that Brewmaster ET that you were sort of mentioning earlier on as well. So... Still recognizing that as a threat here. And at this point, it really does look like they've keyed into Tiaras playing that axe in a position one role. Yeah, and it makes sense. Tiaras does it so well. He's only so farmed. Uh, I'd like to see what the race is again. We had that race in the previous game where they were pretty much neck and neck for up until we had those few team fight deaths. But Lumiere and Tiaras, that is the core matchup. That is where they both play so fantastically well. They're, they're the same person, more or less play style wise they play pretty much exactly the same around their map so it's interesting to see what two ultra farmed carries actually have to do to win the games versus each other but that's where axe versus medusa axe can farm more places than the medusa so we'll have to see if he does pull ahead we just whenever we see tiara's on this axe he's always somehow 5,000 hours ahead of the enemy carry so i wonder if he's going to be able to keep that same pace versus lumiere but you still have this issue. What is Sacred going to play in this game? I don't think you're going to make it an offlane tiny. A lot of the key fours are already out of the pool. And aside from the Bloodseeker, and I don't even think Bloodseeker is that fantastic of a pick here, you need something that's going to help you jump onto that back line while at the same time being able to create space, being a little bit elusive. And I'm really struggling to come up a perfect hero for Sacred. At least they don't random it. Okay, okay then we'll go with the Darks here. Okay. Hmm. Maybe not quite as great in terms of just sort of flat damage in the way maybe a Bloodseeker would have gone, but you didn't really have great options. If you went for the Bloodseeker or something like the Mars, then you've got Shadow Demon and Wyvern, so your initiation wasn't going to be great. You were basically going to get shut down right away. So, well, this one works out a little bit better. You've got the potential wall illusions of the Axe as well, so that can sort of come into play for you. And just a hero that's going to be relatively hard to bring down i think that's going to be another oh god uh, another benefit for infamous as Sakori grabbed the am so they're switching things up right at the very end we were all sort of looking at tiaras uh to play the axe but now we talked about how well he played on the axe the am is kind of one of his heroes from for even further back several patches i think at this point but a hero that i'm pretty damn sure he has a lot of experience on and a lot of comfort with yeah, at the same time, Vitaly Axe is not going to be any slouch. We've seen him prove himself on that hero time and time again, especially when this hero first started getting speed, getting swapped around lane-wise. The only thing that I'm worried about or concerned for Hikori is that usually you don't want to pick Darkseer into Anti-Mage. Of course, both of those heroes do end up having a relatively free game. That is the Darkseer dilemma where, although you have a free game, you're able to farm, do whatever you want. You're giving that safe laner just as much space, even though you can definitely play on him. And assuredly, they're going to go for a dive on him with the tiny every time they can. You usually don't want to play Anti-Mage into that wall. It just doesn't feel like you can actually manage that where if you do it yourself get a little too low mana wise 
you are just a hero that now the Darkseer is going to play on you. He's going to stay in his lane, and every single time you try to farm that up until maybe you get that Battle Fury, you are going to be a target for this Darkseer. So it's a little bit of a risky pick, but you might as well pull out everything you got here because Hori, again, this is this, this is their moment. They need it. They need the win here to make that upper bracket. Of course, no elimination on the line, but still, I am a little bit concerned with this Anti-Mage pick. We haven't seen an Anti-Mage work yet, and... We'll see if Tiaras can really be the first here because now you're going to farm much slower than Lumiere. We're not going to see that same 50-50 matchup. This Medusa is going to get ahead of you and then you just need to hope that you're going to be able to kiter and get those big voids off. Mm -hmm. And what, what a world we live in, right? I mean, listen, this patch has been going on for quite some time, but Dota is still an ever-changing game and case in point, we run into a scenario here where a team with the absolute last pick, picks up an anti-mage, and here we are saying, you know, I, I think the axe at the one would have been a little bit better for them, and that's potentially technically a true statement. So, I don't know, man. We've been on the patch for a while, as I said, but Dota still throws some weird things at you. The AM is a bit of a risk compared to running a position one axe, which is a statement that, like, a year ago would not have made even the slightest bit of sense, but... Here we are. The game's always changing, and Hikori need to hope that it didn't change so much uh, that this AM doesn't still sort of work out for them. Because as we mentioned, they need this game. Win this match here, this final match of the group stage, and you will claim that final spot in the upper half of the playoff bracket. So, a bit of a risk for the Hikori side. We'll see if it pays off. Meanwhile, for Infamous, this Medusa. Gotta sort of show up and show out. Lumiere is going to be the key for them. And at the end of the day, while it does get swapped up a little bit, when it comes to team play, this axe swapping positions doesn't change too much, especially for the invoker. You're still going to play around the fact that you are getting those cataclysm calls off. You are getting a lot of da big damage team fights going on. You just don't have that secondary playmaker now where there is going to be a lot of pressure on Vitaly to be successful. If he does get sort of falling behind, especially versus the Medusa, We've seen the duality in this lane before where if Vitaly can get an early Vanguard start creep cutting, you are going to be incredibly farmed on this axe. We've seen especially the Furia Jovim axe uh, whenever Saxy Fat was on it playing versus a Medusa. He was just able to farm his Ancients, really kept pace, was even further ahead than the Medusa, and then completely snowballed the game for his teammates. At the same time though, if you ever misplay, if you ever fall behind, you are giving this Medusa more or less a completely free lane. It's something that Lumiere will definitely play to his advantage. And that's where, can Hokori force the snake out of the jungle? Can they force these fights early enough where Lumiere won't be able to just show up and completely wipe the board with them? As well as Infamous, finding those slight chances where if Hikori ever expend too much Thanks, in terms guys. of their ultis, of their cooldowns, maybe even their mana, you could always say, hey, Lumiere, come mid. We're going to take their mid tower right now. Let's go. And then the anti-mage cannot make that same response more or less ever, unless that Medusa is sitting on close to zero mana. Mm -hmm. It just feels like the move to the anti-mage could work for them later on. When he's built up, when the mana void's at the ready, you can do a whole hell of a lot if you just sort of jump in there. But before that point, as you said, the Medusa has so much more in the way of flexibility for them. Infamous can do more with the Medusa early than Hikori can do with Tiaras on this AM, but we're just sort of going to work here, taking a look at what Tiaras can get for himself early, but this is going to be a crazy obnoxious lane. Sacred on the Darkseer with Michael on the Tiny. They can just afford to get in there. You see Gardic already getting up, hit up pretty significantly, and now this ward suddenly becomes so much more dangerous. Gardic had to fall back to heal. Michael can either go in for the further damage or do what he's doing right now and just sort of steal that creep wave and walk away Ooh. with Oh, not quite all of it. Wow. Unlucky. He actually doesn't block it with the range creep there. He got a little bit greedy going for everything, but Sacred does not really care here. He got a full wave to himself. He's going to be level 2 in a sec, but still, that's kind of strange. Pops back onto Tiaras. AM only level 1, so there's no blink, so you got to be a little bit careful there as Sacred... Okay. Pops the first point up in the vacuum. We saw that in the series earlier on. Of course... In that situation, it was to get first blood, didn't really happen here, but recognizing that Tiaras doesn't have that blink just yet, might as well put a little bit more pressure on, and without the blink, you don't really need the surge right now either. So, it all kind of works out in Sacred's favor in the end, and now Michael, look at him just charging forward, there's going to be another toss, Gardic isn't in any danger of dying, but 
there is very little right now that Infamous are afraid of from this duo in the bottom lane. And it's really good space. Unfortunately, Michael, he's going for the same pull, but not realizing that that small camp had actually spawned does mess it up just a little bit here. And unfortunately, he was not able to snipe out this Roshan Courier walking over to Gardic. If he sniped that Courier, this bottom lane would be over. They would have to tactfully death. They would have to try and go for the suicides. Otherwise, they would just be out of regen. But these two salves are actually going to more or less completely stabilize TRS. And now you don't have to be as afraid as you otherwise would be. Even taking a little bit of harass, once you're level 2 on this Wyvern, you trade that much more efficiently with that Splinter Blast. I think this Courier has honestly saved the lane a little bit for TRS. Yeah, the fact that it was able to sort of slip in there, well, kind of undetected, it really allows a Courier to maintain their position in this lane in a scenario where they really were getting pushed back early. So, as you said, it might be a bit of a game changer if TRS struggles really in any way in this lane. We already talked about how he was going to be not overly effective in the early stages. It would become even more of a problem if he couldn't even find that farm. But now, Gardic is in a little bit of trouble. They got the toss back. The Vac comes in as well. Gardic will fall. Tiaris oh, able to blink himself out of there, but that is going to be Infamous getting that kill. It does get split, but either way, first kill of the game, go into the Infamous side. This offlane duo really just making their presence felt early. And now, well... Oh... Okay. All right. I thought maybe he was going to try for something there, but just wanted his ring. TP's back to the tower, and Gardic will respawn in time to hit him up with a salve. So it's a bit of a setback. Nothing really just lane losing at this point, but mentioned it before, Infamous really not afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their opponents in this lane. And just look, unfortunately, got unlucky with the creeps there and the tower aggro, so Tiras will take even more damage from these iron shells but now that he's 1-1-1 does have that extra inherent magic resistance so he won't get beamed up too hard but you're able to bring a bottle to sacred once you get that second or third mana item on dark syrup that's where we see the farm start to explode and then it's just run at you a nice toss back actually toss on to gardic avalanche to follow vacuum to pull it in and gardic is not dead yet he's able to fly himself away gets out of that ion shell range so Ooh, nicely done by the Wyvern, but again, this is just going to happen over and over and over again. Sacred, as you mentioned, working towards that second mana item, he's looking for the boots. So, I think the last time we saw the Darkseer in that previous matchup, it was the, uh, excuse me, the Soul Ring instead. But the boots is going to allow Michael to maintain that aggression as well, giving him the mana for the Avatos combo. So, Sacred really just looking to be as aggressive and annoying as possible in this lane, and Tiaris. There's not a whole lot that can be done about it. He just has to weather the storm and try to find what last hits he can. But now Michael is coming in. Eh, okay. Just going to force out the blink. Tiaris gets away. But, I mean, you're really getting everything you want out of this bottom lane for the side of Infamous. And elsewhere on the map, their farm isn't really going too poorly in any of the other lanes either. You see Alone's doing okay here against Analog. Actually, more than okay. Top in terms of the last hit count. And your Medusa, really not feeling much pressure either. So if you're Infamous... Are you winning all three of these lanes? Maybe that's a step too far to say, but they're not really under much pressure. As well as now, you're out of the danger zone. You have that second point in Counterspell. While you're not doing the most damage with your mana break, Thanks, you guys. are also seeing Tiaras stabilize way, way more than he really should. And that's where the Darkseer effect starts to happen, where every single time this wave goes into the Anti-Mage's Tower, he is under absolutely no threat. He is going to be able to farm up and work towards those early timings, and that is the name of this game. It is all about the time that is allowed for either of these carries, the actual space when they're farming, and this is a good start for the Anti-Mage. Both safe laners are very happy, but you just have this free farm axe standing at you on the other side of the map. Everyone has so many last hits in this game. Everybody's topping around 30. Just... Well, not a lot in the way of aggression just yet. Still waiting on it. Six minutes in, but we are seeing movement let's put it that way which sort of made his way mid but not going all the way in for any sort of fighting just yet sort of almost by design really hasn't been any reason for anybody to maneuver since everyone is able to find as you were sort of mentioning pretty spectacular farm for themselves but alone gonna get hit up a little bit there in that middle lane cold snap tornado emp all being applied but alone's gonna be okay he'll start healing up with the bottle and that's where that is the matchup that is going to maybe suck the most. But 
really neither mid laner can make those aggressive moves unless we do see a rune coming out for that void spirit same with the invoker unless you get something like a haste rune you are going to be stuck in those side lanes and oh. okay alone is walking over if they're contesting stacks this might be an opportunity but this is still a difficult kill a one sin but he's gonna get hit by the disruption first so there's no stun coming out from him just yet which however is already gonna get taken down and now the axe is alone but Look at him just waiting for his opportunity. He gets A in the top, and he should get the Culling Blade kill here. Actually, he didn't have the mana for it, so he'll just right-click it down, but that is A taken out. Analog's coming over to help, but so is Michael. He's going to get hit up, though, by the EMP Tornado, so he's not able to get out the Avalanche in time, and once he does throw it down, it's off the mark. So, Corey have the chance to keep this fight going. Michael's still sort of waiting in the wings, but there's really nothing left for him to do. He could maybe pop the Mango for a toss play, but I'm not really sure anyone has the damage to keep this fight going at this point, so... The Cory are just going to farm on their opponent's side of the map, basically daring Infamous to come after them, and Lumiere doesn't want to, and really for good reason. He does not have the damage he needs, but, okay, Alone's going to give it a go. A jumps in as well. They get down the two-man Earth Spike. That's a nice bit of damage as they pick off Widge almost in the exact same spot that he died the last time, although he's actually not dead yet. There we go. Alone will finish off the kill. Batali and Analog now fighting up. This time they don't have a whole lot of HP, but they do have that. Batali goes in with the Culling Blade, and they do take down that Void Spirit, so... Second round of fighting turns into a one-for-one, one, but a one-for-one one I think Akori are going to be more than happy with. Core for support trade going in their favor, and now, well, you saw them push across the river to try and steal their opponent's stacks. They've got some stacks of their own in this west side jungle, so they could really just come out ahead if they send the axe over to farm that up. And during all of that time, that was about two minutes where Lumiere was not able to hit the top wave at all. I think him being the one to be forced to contest those stacks was a relatively massive mistake, honestly, from Infamous, where Lumiere wasn't able to hit creeps for a very long time. Sure, you're getting the scraps that the axe is letting you, but losing alone on top of all of that, that is a pretty big array of misplays coming out where you look at bottom, sure, Tiaris is under a little bit of pressure, but Michael had to leave the lane. So Tiaras, he's going to leave bottom as soon as he feels like it's going to be too much. He actually doesn't have a TP scroll right now. Oh, a mistake of yeah, his he, own. Um, he's actually trapped down here. He can't leave just yet. He'll just have to sit in the tree line. So as long as he doesn't reveal himself, he should be fine. But that does also mean without the TP to sort of bail himself out, he might just have to let this tower go. The glyph, though, is going to... Oh, going to be deployed, Michael. Uh, he sensed something was up there, but... Not actually going to get the vision onto Tiaris just yet, although Alone is now moving in as well. So Tiaris really is not out of the woods yet, quite literally. But he does now blink himself away. He should be fine, but that means Infamous are now completely clear to take the tower. So Tiaris, yeah, he didn't have a TP there, but he's at least able to get himself out. Really losing out on efficiency more than anything else here, but that could make a difference. Infamous are now going to look to push even further with more control around the bottom lane and in the south side jungle. But really... If they want to truly try and push Tiaras out here, they also need that tier 1 tower mid. So, would not be surprised to see them start shifting their focus in that direction. You already see a couple of heroes making their way over. Gardic is here not entirely alone. You do see the Shadow Demon sort of hanging out nearby, but I don't know if those two alone would be enough to mount a defense. But right now, it looks like Michael and Sacred are actually just going to try and disrupt Tiaras' farm. They push into the jungle, they'll steal away this stack, and... Okay, Gardic wants to respond. They get the nice Winter's Curse down, and... I'm not really sure they can get out of this. Sacred is going to drop down the wall, but the vacuum hasn't come out yet. He's actually hit up by the cold snap into the oh, into the taunt, even throwing down that mana void at the end to secure the kill for Tiaris. And Akori respond perfectly. Infamous were sort of gunning for them, looking for that kill. They do have to bring quite a few heroes over, but you can't really argue with the results. Two kills, and they have a chance now to get Tiaris a little bit more space down bottom. And both supports, they have the very clean rotations. Whenever Analog left that mid lane, they get level 6 without the Tome. They place the ward on the high ground, and alone broke away to get that illusion room. So it's a very, very clean punish, and sure, you do lose out on that stack a little bit, but Vitaly is really the only one who can farm them, and he is coming up on his timing after this ancient stack. Gonna have that blink dagger, and that's where we're really gonna see the aggression start to come. And even alone, yeah, they are illusion jumping. rune bails them out. Not quite enough lockdown. Without the Illusion Rune, maybe they make that happen, but Alone can pop it, get himself away. As you mentioned, though, the Axe. Uh, Blink Dagger done. Blink Dagger Vanguard in 11 and a half minutes, so Vitaly's going to start making some waves here. And on the infamous side of things, who is your sort of equivalent? Who is that man who's going to stand up? The Darkseer is working towards a Blink Dagger. I think he just finished off his mech. Uh, yes, he did. So that might be the answer. 
If the mech can get deployed here, maybe you can save that hero that gets jumped in on by Vitali, sort of mitigate that damage, and try to turn things from there. But that is assuming that the Darkseer isn't the one who gets jumped on and that he's in the fight to sort of make that defensive play. So it's going to come down a lot to Sacred's own positioning here with regards to whether his teammates can survive some of the initiation coming out from Hikori. And you see them, they're so well set up on this region, and they're baiting it so hard with the smoke in the blink. They can't play on the Medusa, and alone, he saw the regen. I wonder, they're going to start to move in, and I believe the smoke mm. just broke on oh. Vitaly, but... He jumped, got the taunt, follow-up, Tornado's a bit off the mark, that's unfortunate. But now Michael, he wants in, there's going to be the Avalanche into the toss, they're trying to actually isolate the axe, they hit him up with the Finger of Death even, but Vitaly, still not dead yet, there's the Winter's Curse. Vitaly's going to be able to sort of just walk away from this fight, Michael is not caught in it, but they're not able to actually find that kill, he blinks away just in time, and... I mean, Infamous are still going, but they get Gardic, not the Axe. Vitaly would have been a massive target there for them, but they're missing just the really tiniest bit of damage. He had something like, what, 50 HP at the most? So Infamous had an opportunity. They do at least make something happen, though. They find the kill, and they can get onto this Tier 1 tower. We mentioned this Tier 1 for them. So important of an objective to secure to try and just really tear that south side jungle and its farming opportunities away from Tiaras. And that's where, with the Void Spirit, you weren't really able to butter up this tower at all. You're actually just farming a small camp stack. But that is something that Lumiere can reliably depend on. He can always make that rotation mid play a little bit more active when it comes to pressuring those towers. Whereas Tiaris, as you can already see when he TP top, is way more interested in putting creep wave pressure on. He wants to get the lanes in. He wants you to force to react. And with this Battle Fury, not a bad Battle Fury timing. Mm -hmm. It was 12.30. He didn't have anything on top of it. He is still working on his treads. But again, time is the name of the game. If you can wait out this anti-mage, let him get a few items, your targets really are going to open up. Even the Darkseer will be someone that you can play on in these side lanes, specifically versus the Shadow Demon, where we saw it a little bit in that previous game, but Demonic Purge just ruins oh. your hero. And oh, here. Caught out in the jungle, they are going to try and help him. Aedho has to sidestep that EMP, so he's a little bit slower oh, no. to try and react, and uh, Lumiere has no mana. He has no mana at all. They take him down, and now there's the Winter's Curse. Gardic, big plays, resetting the fight. Vitaly's waiting for the taunt, able to get it down on the two. One of them was put under by the disruption, though, but that's just not going to matter. Michael will be taken down alone, now very limited on his own mana. He's going to try to get away, but he has no astral step charges, trying to get out with the Dissimilate, but he runs right into Gardic, and this is not looking good for them. Tiaras now blinks in. He's going to be able to find that kill actually Gardic's the one who gets it onto alone either way though they will lose the void spirit and infamous that started out so strangely you thought okay Lumiere he's getting hit up a little bit but how much do Hikori really commit for it they they go all in they know infamous don't have their full lineup here we can take this fight and the results for infamous are disastrous and while you can't immediately go into that structure damage you can't put too much pressure on the mid tower force more TP's mid force more people to play around it and I think just he didn't toggle his mana shield. If he toggles the mana shield there and then gets his 17 stick off, he has enough for at least the stone gaze. But instead, Lumiere just gets chained up, maybe not assuming that the spirit vessel being done on the invoker. We usually don't see the spirit vessel finished up, but Analog just had a little bit too much damage. And look at these stacks that Vitaly are about to clean up. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Is, He's uh, going for the heck carry of a lot build. Of gold. He's yeah, even in the offlane position, style. he wants the Manta. And one thing you mentioned for Analog, uh, getting off the Spirit Vessel, you actually look at the itemization. Yeah, Spirit Vessel first, now he's working on the Hand of Midas. A lot of the time we sort of see things the other way around, which is why, as you mentioned, maybe they didn't anticipate that that was going to be done so early. They thought the Invoker would just go for the Midas first, as a lot of the time they do. So Analog's able to sort of switch him up a little bit and then... I'm just not sure they realized that there were going to be five heroes in that fight until it was too late. But if you're infamous, that is unfortunate. It's a setback. You lost the fight, but the Medusa goes right back into the jungle. Lumiere's farming up some stacks of his own here and actually going for the Butterfly as his next item. So this is, as of right now, just going to remain kind of a casual Yasha. Yeah, and it makes sense because typically Lumiere... We all know he likes to go for that Sanjin Yasha build where he doesn't go for the Manta Stone to accelerate his farm. Unless you're Manta dodging call, there really isn't a reason for the Manta Stone in this game aside from possibly that Spirit Vessel. But the big reason you want this butterfly, it is the reason you, or the item that you always go versus Anti-Mage. If you can force him to buy an MKB, 
that's the item slot that always eats away at anti-mage players where if you could be ahead of your enemy in the core matchup you want a butterfly and you want to force them to get mkb the hero just really doesn't like playing around that so it's the perfect counter but it is a very expensive item that lumiere will more or less have to all in on and it is no scotty it is no aghanim scepter a lot of the aspects that usually lumiere plays around are not going to be there for him where he's going to be more reliant again on his darks here on his tiny to create these plays he's going to be a lot more dependent medusa than even lumiere is used to at this point of the game where hikori it is starting to feel like if they can get these items which are starting to come their way tiaras is actually ahead of the medusa in net worth now then their game gets much easier but here smoke up smoke alone jumping oh, in alone it. does have the aghanim scepter upgrade here as well he was able to just pick that up so has the silence on that resonant pulse, which means Widge, once he's in, he's really not getting back out. Jumped in on and quickly taken down. Michael as well, I believe, just revealed that blink dagger that he had purchased. So we were talking about Hikori getting some items. Infamous have picked up some as well. So they tried to take advantage of it. They smoked their way forward. It wasn't the biggest kill in the world, but they're still hanging out mid, looking either for a fight or for the tier one tower, or honestly, at this point, maybe both. They're really gearing up for it. They haven't crossed over just yet, but... There's really no other reason why they'd still be hanging out in this area as five unless they were at least hoping to get that opening. And this is where Infamous, it is so key for them to take away this mid tower, but they're going to be more hesitant because if they bring Lumiere to a fight that isn't successful, they're going to lose their mid tier one tower in return. And Gardic, he's trying to spoil the fight here and what a sick positioning actually. <laughs> Doesn't let anyone get caught. And Infamous. I mean, you gotta, you like the mindset, right? They even surged Michael, but he went straight south, where unfortunately for him, there weren't actually any enemy heroes. But if you're infamous, these are the kind of plays that you're looking for right now. You want to try and get aggressive. You now have some of those uh, buffed up heroes with the Ags and the Blink on Michael and alone. So you want to try and take advantage of any sort of power spike right now, create more space for that Medusa, and maybe get some eyes on tiaras as well they haven't really seen go. the am for a little bit as they do make the move michael jumps in nice toss back play into the avalanche and yeah Gardic is not going to be able to get himself away from that one he gets hit up by that remnant before he had the chance for the cold embrace the winter's curse really any sort of defensive play so infamous get it but now they need that tower they really do need to get this objective but alone is not really in a great position to do so he needs to wait for his own creep wave to come back up as well so It'll take him a little bit of extra time, but we do see Infamous starting to get into position. Michael, though, wants the fight, and unfortunately, good blink, but the Ava is just a little off the mark, and if he hits that, Alone's in the perfect position to follow it up with the Astral Step into the Silence and the Resonant Pulse, so Analog kind of lucky that he dodged that one out, but now that Tier 1 mid, it's still under Siege, but still not falling. But that is the problem that really infamous have every single time they whiff with the play they are falling behind on cores that do not farm where hikori they have this axe and this anti-mage farming pretty much 24 7 mm -hmm. and until they bring the medusa or feel comfortable enough for lumiere to show up to this engagement they aren't going to bring the snake so they'll finally bring it just so that way this tower is guaranteed going to die TRS. TRS. okay they do get him but there's a winter's curse into the taunt from vitali so Maybe there's a chance for them to respond. Alone has no mana to work with here as he's just going to be taken down in the tree line. And Witch. Infamous... Look at him. He's keeping Lumiere in position. Can his teammates get there in time? Doesn't look like it, but they are trying to get onto A at least. The lion is still hit up by that spirit vessel, so he was taking some continued damage, and now the Sunstrike is going to be there. Analog gets it, drops the voice line in as well at the perfect timing. Double kill for the Invoker, and that's going to at least slightly make up for the loss of TRS. It is a bit of a setback, but now Bakori find the two kills, and they're the ones pushing for that tier 1 tower mid. So after all of those attempts, after all that effort from Infamous to try and claim that objective, they're the ones that lose the tier 1 tower first, and now both mid and top are gone, so Northside Jungle is very much open for those Hikori heroes. And now you have to be concerned. Tiaris, even though he did give away his life there, is just going to very simply farm up. They're going to force you to come back mid one more time, get one more last hit onto that tier one mid tower. But Vitali, he is now working steadfast towards that Mantis style. He's going to be able to make those solo plays. It just feels like Hikori are so independent with the majority of their heroes where Infamous need each other to really get away in these fights. And it looks like this mid tower might just die to creeps at the end of the day. But the smoke up, I like it from Infamous. Alone needs to be so careful though. He can't allow himself to be caught without his spells. If he gets hit by that EMP, it's so much harder for him to play. 
And Widge might be the target again. Looks like it. Oh, he missed. Okay, I think he's they still got it. Path. There we go. But yeah, resources have to be committed further. Michael has to jump in alone, has to use all of the charges he had at his disposal. And they do still get the kill at the end of the day. But once again, just kind of like the last time, that's a five-man smoke. And you got Widge, who is one of the lowest net worth heroes in the game right now. So... Infamous, it's a good mindset, it's good to stay on the aggressive, but the targets need to be better, and now they've got one. Analog, gonna get himself caught, BKB though, gonna be popped, and he just walks away. There's the ghost walk as well, and uh, Vitaly actually TP'd in, he got the taunt onto Michael, so they're gonna turn this fight around. Michael has no way out of this, his blink is cancelled, and now, TR uh, Tiaris, uh, that's a little bit risky, he's gonna get hexed up. Nice play with the Manta though, he's gonna be able to jump himself out, and actually avoids that stone gaze as well, as Vitaly tries to jump back in, missing with the taunt, but... Infamous are sort of getting corralled together and pushed back. So it does appear that Hikori... I mean, they've held the line, but Vitaly kind of wants to go back in. Can he get the blink off? A is going to be the one who's get, oh, getting caught, and yeah. That's about as easy a kill as you're going to get there, as Vitaly gets it done with the culling blade, and... Well... Infamous... They try. They get one kill onto Widge, they try to get another kill, and it honestly wasn't a bad initiation onto Analog, it's just that BKB comes out really at the perfect time. Nine second charge gets analog away, and then the reinforcements arriving allows them just completely turn on their enemies. It's the anti greed coming in from analog. We both saw that Midas queued up. We both expect it, but saying they're going to jump at me, I'm going to play around their timing, play less around my own. My teammates are doing a really good job right now. And you look at Tiaris and Vitaly, one death split across both of them, and well, Widge might be tanking a lot of these ganks. That is all he is. He is just a shadow demon. He is something that maybe alone is going to get a little bit more farm on, but he's going for this Kai Assange. There's no BKB coming out from him. There's no scary item, and he's not farming too fast. That's the issue with this Void Spirit. Unless you actually want to commit all your mana constantly to not making plays, you are going to fall behind, and that's where you can't help but feel like Kikori are getting to get away with a little bit more of the map, as well as Lumiere. He's got his crit stick queued up now, but without it, they cannot put pressure on Roche. They cannot force Hikori to come to a fight that they're not prepared for. And do Hikori care about this tier 1 top? Absolutely not. They want it gone, to be honest. They're going to get their glyph back. They're going to be able to play out in mid and bottom and feel completely safe doing it. I just feel like with Infamous as they are, they're not happy. Oh, Widge. Didn't really okay. need to do this. It is going to provide nope. a distraction, but... Uh... I don't know. That's the way Widge has been playing for most of this game, though. So, really, he's still not giving up all that much with that death. But now Gardic, he's going to get jumped in on as well. And this is where things are going to cost them a little bit more heavily. That is now both of your supports being taken out for not much gain elsewhere. They are pushing the Tier 1 Tower bot, I suppose. So, if Analyke can get that, that's going to sort of wipe away some of the negatives from that. But eh, if you're Hikori, the sacrificial play is nice. But only if you're really sort of intentional. Ooh intentionally looking for the trade as the tower does fall michael tried to blink in but without the detection they're not gonna be able to do much of anything but now vitali up in the top lane they're searching for him lumiere actually went in with that stone gaze pretty early but they don't have him locked down they are still looking though and sacred is going to be able to get into position there's going to be the punch coming out but vitali's going to really make him work nice for this block. one but yeah the block off with the illusion the hex now coming in too vitali really has nowhere to go as he is going to get stunned up the finger of death drops him low and they do manage to find that kill so it maybe wasn't the fastest kill in the world, but they show that persistence, they get the pick off, and those are the kind of plays Infamous are going to need a little bit more of as Lumiere well, he continues to build. I believe that's the crit stick done for him, those final pieces coming out. Yeah, so Crystal is finished off, Lumiere's damage is going to start taking a bit of a, a bit of an uptick, and that's something Hikori need to be so very careful of, as right now, well, they're not being all that careful over in the west side jungle. Witch has been caught out once again, Gardic is doing his best to run interference, but he doesn't actually want to commit the Winter's Curse there, so... A Widge will be taken down, and I don't know. Initially, we were sort of talking about the sacrificial plays from the supports as being really not major, but the longer this game goes on, those kills are leading into more farm, a couple of tower pushes here and there, so I'm not really sure you're in the same position to sacrifice uh, the likes of Widge and Gardic there in the way that you were five to ten minutes ago. As you see Infamous, they're eyeing up the Roche pit. They're going to go yeah. for it. This is the timing. You have a DD rune, you have a Crystalis, you have the full butterfly completed on Lumiere, and this is the fight that Hikori are forced to show up at that they might not want to do. They have to be very careful with how they engage. If they can get anyone next to Lumiere, they will die, but they're not going to gauge the damage correctly here. I don't think they know about the DD. In. 
Avalanche into Toss. That's going to sort of lock down two immediately. Lumiere, meanwhile, just going to work inside of that pit, looking to finish off Roshan. While he does so, Alone actually just gets completely locked down. They'll finish him off. Lumiere was able to get the Aegis, but now they have to get the hell away from this fight. They're not going to be able to get everybody out. A will be taken down. Meanwhile, Ooh. they do catch out Michael. Analog's incredibly low, but the Cold Embrace keeps him alive. Michael was able to force staff himself onto the low ground. He's looking for the TP out. Does Tiaras have the mana void? Yes, he does. He will pop it, willing to throw that ult out to make sure he gets that kill. And Tiaras is able to pick up the double. Three dead on the infamous side. They do at least get away with the Aegis in the hands of the Medusa, but Hakori, outside of just straight up stopping the Roche attempt, probably got the best fight that they were reasonably going to be able to put together there. Yeah, and they clean up absolutely everyone. Analog is very lucky. You actually see him just farming there. He TP'd in, and he unfortunately got tossed onto the Winter Wyvern that was just flying over. So that's why he's still up there for another seven seconds here. But the Medusa had to focus the Roche, got kited away from everyone else on her side. And that's where Tiaris... Once the lion is out of the pool, once the wall is already committed defensively there, you have this Scotty now, you can chase down absolutely everyone. No one can escape from you, and you aren't really doing that much damage to threaten him aside from the Medusa, but if you get your hands tied by both of these supports on the Hikori side, that is what these supports are geared for. We already know how good the Winter Wyvern core is at kiting this Medusa. And now bottom, oh, That's Lumiere. a lot of TPs, they're looking for it, Lumiere. They don't want to jump in just yet with that Winter's Curse. The problem is Gardic actually got hit by the punch, pulled back in by the back now, and now the curse is available. Will he deploy it? He's looking for his opportunity, but he is dropping so insanely low, but a good play from Witch. Coming in with a disruption. Sacred's not able to finish that off, but there's going to be the lockdown. Alone hits him up with the Remnant, so Gardic will be taken down. Analog fell as well. Now Witch tossed back into the fight. Able to buy a little bit of time there with that Aeon Disc, but that's only going to delay the death. I don't think that can actually prevent it, as Witch will get taken down, and... I, I don't know if it would have been enough to turn the fight, but I I feel like Gardic should have just thrown down something there, but that's not a fight Hikori wanted in the first place. Tiaris, as you saw, wasn't really there. He's trying to farm up a little bit more, so he's not fully invested in that fight, and with Analog going down so quickly, yeah, maybe it was just in their best interest to pull back and try and save that ult for later, but the result is that Infamous take the fight, and they're just going to barrel their way down mid looking for the tier 2. Yeah, and... It was a nice play. They would have taken the Aegis out of Lumiere, but Lumiere got a breakneck Mystic Snake off, as well as Sacred. Three-man vacuum wall, you can't ask for more. The Tiny was out of position, the Lion was still having to run over to his teammate, but this is quite the issue now that you have to deal with. Fortunately, Lumiere is actually out of mana here, but he gets the tower, he's able to reset, but top, Tiaris, looks like he baited, oh my goodness, he baited alone so hard and he's actually out. Okay. Now with Alone dead, if you're infamous in this middle lane, you gotta go. You need to get out of here. Analog is trying to track him down. He did get eyes on A for just a brief moment, but I don't think he wants to overextend. Yep, that's a problem. The overextension might be an issue for him. A's gonna turn around, but there's gonna be the taunt anyway, so they've locked A down and the lion. Just gonna have to sacrifice himself. Maybe, yeah, maybe if that Earth Spike connects onto one or both of those heroes, they could turn, but without it, infamous to side, it's probably in our best interest to fall back there, especially with Alone again not available for that fight. So they push their way forward now on the Hikori side, looking for the tier two, but just because Infamous fell back from the previous fight doesn't mean they're willing to give up objectives. You see Lumiere and Sacred just sitting in the tree line. They cleared through the creep wave and the illusions pretty quickly on Vitality. Yeah, exactly. And now they do get more time and this is where the Aegis is ticking out in a minute here. Then they can play much more aggressively on the Medusa. The Medusa that has the Satan queued up, but that's where she will feel like, okay, nobody can kill me. They have the Scotty, but I will be absolutely fine. That's where this lineup feels pretty much unmanageable for the Anti-Mage, especially time it up with the split shot uses modifiers. And there isn't many opportunities for TR to now go for that kill, but Tiaris, he's turning back for that MKB. He built a BKB of his own, so he doesn't need to worry about sticking on heroes like the Lion. He's not putting it up to chance, and that's where he will feel a lot safer actually existing in these team fights. We're still just on such a razor fine line where either team can really break each other's base if either side decides to go down. This Aegis will be reclaimed pretty soon here. I don't think Lumiere can make the play too fast. Maybe a few right clicks on that range tracks and then probably going to back out. But he needs to be careful. You can't overextend here, especially versus the Shadow Demon. And actually, they're not set up on Hikori. So yeah, this he's is just going to be a glyph. Might be able to get away with forcing that oh, one out. And nice. oh, Widge, he got baited in. Perfect move from Michael. The second that Lumiere starts falling back, Michael blinks in. That... 
I'm, I'm gonna assume that that was intentional, but even if it wasn't, that's a massive play from Infamous, and now, you see that the Hikori defense, they're starting to get things going, but they weren't there when they needed to be, or as early as they needed to be, and that's the tower and the ranged racks being taken down. There is one thing, though, one combo that Infamous do oh. still have to be careful about, although, okay, maybe not, they're gonna jump in onto Vitaly, and with Vitaly sort of being locked down early, they can't make the jump that they want. There's the Winter's Curse, but now, what more can they do? Analog, he has the Aghanim Scepter, so the Cataclysm can come into play here. He will throw it out now. Oh my god, it just blew up everybody. Lumiere dead, Sacred gone. That was the Aegis timing out on him, so he's out of the fight, and oh, right on cue. That's exactly the combo. The stun, or the taunt, into that Cataclysm play. Infamous just literally can't control their own movement during it. And they get kind of blown up there. There is a buyback out from Sacred, so he's at least going to try and maintain the Equilibrium, make sure Hikori can't directly push uh, up onto that high ground, but I, I don't think that they had realized the Invoker had picked up that Ags until they're caught in the middle of the lockdown combo. Yeah, and that's where it's very, very unfortunate. You see him immediately might be kicking himself a little bit, but that BKB needs to be on the Medusa. If you are not going to survive this Mana Void, none of your teammates are, so you need to at least def or at least itemize a little bit more defensively, and that's where this Anti-Mage really starts to pick up speed in this matchup. He has 25 now, he has the Shard, he's going to start to run at you, and this is where Infamous, they can't crumble. They have to keep a very strict uh, position whenever it comes to these team fights. It was really just getting a little bit too low mana-wise on that Medusa in a blink call. That's all it was there. You had no supports involved in that fight. Of course, you had the solo Winter's Curse that really didn't do much. It was a short curse as well. But this is the team fights. Those are the situations where Hikori can completely walk all over you. And once this MKB is finished, there is no chances for you to actually sit around and just let your mana get drained like that. And actually, okay, Michael tried to go for a jump, but... Seems a little bit risky. Yeah. And yeah, that's the point. Once uh, once the MKB is finished off, if you're Lumiere, you don't want that 1v1 anymore. You can't just sit there, as you said, and say, yeah, you're going to hit me, but I can do more damage than you, so I'll just stand here. That's really not going to be the case. The mana uh, can be burned away, and then at that point, the Void can come through, the Cataclysm can come through, and Lumiere is not going to be in a super healthy spot. So... We'll see what he does to try and counteract it. You see the Swift Blink being queued up. He's actually got, uh, technically a Rapier sort of on deck as well. Don't know if that's actually going to be the call for him at any point, but the fact that it's something that they're even maybe thinking about at this uh, stage kind of tells you the point in the game that we've arrived at. We're into the stage now where Tiaris is well and truly a, a massive threat to not just the Medusa, but the entirety of that infamous lineup. And unfortunately for him, he really hasn't been dictating the enemy team's build. Aside from this butterfly, every other item he's had to go for has either been just sort of by the by or it's been in direct counter to what the enemy team is building. And now TRS has his MKB. This matchup is now even, except it's Anti-Mage versus Medusa. You are going to be able to kill her very easily. You have to play around Lifesteal now if you're a Lumiere, but those items feel so far away. And while you have this Blink Dagger now, we're going to get in this situation where Hikori need to either kite around and Infamous, they need to get on everyone except for the anti mage. But look at bottom. Tiaras is alacrity. Is, yeah, that's an alacrity to AM. He is just hacking away. And Michael's the only one back right now. He can't hold this by himself. They need reinforcements. Otherwise, Tower's going to fall. We do see those TPs, though. Everybody's in. But by the time they get here, AM just blinks away. So. You get in, you get the tier 3 tower, you get out, you force the movement out from Infamous. And this is where we're really going to see more and more control. If Akori can continue to make plays like this, Infamous don't have the initiative. They don't really have the means of dictating where the fights happen. They have to instead react uh, to Hikori's moves on the map. So, very dangerous play. You would think Infamous would have that sort of lead in terms of the control. They took that entire middle lane of Rax. It's just not really the case right now. And... Situations like this, Abe might want to be a little bit careful. Vitaly could jump in onto him, Sacred's nearby, but that would be a little bit of a rough one. But at this point, Vitaly's trying to play it safe as well. He doesn't want to go in. Yeah, he's got a BKB, but eh. So much could go wrong in that scenario, and what you get in exchange is one kill onto a lion. So the uh, potential costs outweighing the benefits, as meanwhile, Tiara just continues sending those in. 
The illusions move forward. They've got the Manta illusions. They've got the Shadow Demon illusions. So they can just sort of keep on sort of hacking away at their opponents. And I don't know, heaven forbid that they actually end up with something like an Illusionist Cape because then it becomes even more painful for Infamous to deal with that. But Infamous right now... They're looking for the fight. They're trying to push their way forward. That tornado's not oh. going to hit on much. Michael, okay. Blinks into all of them. They get the silence down, and oh my god, Analog, he's just gone. Silenced up. Locked down. Finished off. He will buy back, and now this fight is starting to break up a little bit. The Medusa got up onto the high ground, and actually not accurate. stuck there, but there's going to be the Cataclysm coming through. Lumiere is going to go down. Gardic does fall himself, but he's quick to buy back, and now Infamous, what do you do? Sacred is uh, dropping low. He's trying to get away, but there's really nowhere for him to go. He can't even surge as the mana is going to get burned out of him. And you see Infamous, they actually had to fall back to their opponent's side of the map because that was actually safer for them. Alone managed to get himself out. You see Michael just looking to cut creep waves before he eventually backs out of here as well. But now, if you're Hikori, you took the fight, you have control of the map, you have control of the pit, and they will make their way in. But they had to use a buyback uh, on Analog and actually one on Gardic as well. But the end result, really going to be something that they're happy with. They have taken control of the match right now. And that is a little bit of a slow reaction coming in from Analog, not getting that BKB off after the toss land. And something they've been really good at with this Tiny is getting it immediately chained into the Lion's spells, but nothing on the Anti-Mage. And then Lumiere, for some reason, it felt like he was cliffing himself. He walked underneath all of the enemy team's vision, kited away from his allies, already used the Stone Gaze, and you just lose that fight straight up. You had to use the Stone Gaze so early, and... Uh oh Oh, Michaels, he's getting caught... This is the punish for going for those waves, and here comes everyone. <laughs> this just feels a little unfair. All five heroes tracking him down. Michael's going to do his best to buy time, obviously, but he is going to go down, but he created a uh, distraction. The creep wave got cut a little bit, so that will buy enough time for the Medusa to respawn for sure, and maybe even get the Darkseer back in before uh, anyone from Hikori could even reach that high ground, so... It is a sacrifice that he felt like he was willing to make, and I think it is going to be helpful for Infamous, but... Akori... I don't know if they're going to slow down here. They've still got Aegis and Sheez, so... They're looking for an opening. Scanning out on the... Or not scanning literally, but looking out on the high ground to see what they can find. Is alone? Oh, no, alone. alone! That's a little bit awkward. He's at least able to get away, but that is going to be Aeon Disc Pop, but... If he died there, that would have been just absolutely horrible. So at least he's able to get himself away, but while he's doing so... The racks are falling. Range Rax was taken down bot as Analog just sent in those Forged Spirits. Meanwhile, up top, Tiaris, he's looking for the Tier 3. Focus is going to get split here by Infamous. They really just have to pick, but the problem is... They have to pick, but they don't want to commit for a fight right now. Without the Tiny Up, they're missing a little bit more of that lockdown. So, you're just going to have to split your defenders, and that means that Hikori really are still getting a lot of what they want here. They're applying that pressure. No one's in any danger. They've still got the Aegis for three minutes, and they can pick and choose where and when they want to fight this one out. And now you have this split push, you have everything just working against you if you're infamous. I think that's why we had the desperation. We have that Divine Rapier still queued up because Lumiere is not doing enough. He doesn't have the control that could come from a Scotty. It doesn't really matter in this game in the first place. He can't go for a Lincoln Sphere to stop any of that mana void going down. He can't really buy too many items at this point. And even worse, you can't buy an MKB for this Anti-Mage. You're going to be way too behind the 8-ball at that stage. And Tiaris is sitting on 5k gold. He's going to win the matchup as soon as this Aegis is out of his hands. And what can you do if you're infamous? You have to kite him out. You have to get that Darkseer illusion. I feel like we keep on seeing a wall land, but after a hero is already dead on the infamous side, and while you are getting these nice tossbacks coming in from Michael, it just does not feel like enough. And you even see Analog feeling comfortable enough while his entire team is inches away from the tier 3 towers to farm their entire side of the map as well. And this is where Infamous are no longer going to get any more items. They're not going to hit their timings. There's a lot of items that they could go for still that they still sort of need, but they just simply aren't going to get. Analog's going to farm his side of the map, wait for all the creeps to respawn, and Tiars is going to do whatever he wants for the next minute and a half. Mm -hmm. Just a situation where Infamous are forced with their backs against the walls here, really. They can't do much right now. They've got to wait for that Aegis to expire. They've got to wait for this pressure to try and just abate even in the slightest. But, you know, you see Tiaras, I mean, he's still looking for this. He wants to go in. He would love to make use of that Aegis. And as a matter of fact, you actually see him swapping in the Flicker. So 
If he does jump in, you're not even going to be able to necessarily make sure he can't leave, as we do see the push in there. Michael, with the tossback play, does get Vitaly into the fight, but Tiaris is going to go for it. Tiaris is dropping a little bit low, but again, able to blink himself away. A, though, does buy back, and Tiaris is actually stuck in the tree line, so... I mean, he did have the flicker. He cho chooses not to use it. The Aegis is going to bring him back up, but there's going to be that Winter's Curse. Lumiere is at least able to get away, but... Well, that's going to lead them back in. Cataclysm comes through. Alone was able to dodge it, though. Good dissimilate play to keep him safe. He cannot afford to die here. But Infamous, they're just getting pushed oh, back. Tornadoes. Sacred taken down. Michael was, I believe, hit up there by the Mana Void. It wasn't enough to kill him, though. So he is going to be okay. And Hikori are going to be able to sort of regroup. But alone, trying to push out. He wants that kill onto Gardic. If he could take away the threat of a second Winter's Curse in that fight, that would be big. Then they do finish him off. Michael has to blink out, but now how does he get back in? The four step is not going to be enough to get him back into his base. He will be taken down. Michael falls. He does have a buyback available. Meanwhile, alone, uh, alone, living up to his name a little bit there. He is completely by himself in that jungle. He dies and drops the gem. And did he have buyback? Yes, he does. Okay, so he at least has the money to get back into the game if he's needed. And at this point, kind of feels like he's going to be needed. The Aegis may not be there any longer, but Hikori have made some significant progress breaking into their opponent's base. They've taken all of bot and most of top, so they sense their opportunity as Michael force after himself forward, going to get off the avalanche. The toss comes out, but he doesn't actually get the full toss back, so Vitaly is just going to keep on pushing his way forward while his teammates, they're actually trying to get the tier 3. Tiaris wants that objective. A is doing everything he can, but he can only suck away the mana. There's no damage there, and Widge, with the actual illusions of the Medusa, takes A down. Michael falls as well, and Infamous it really just looks like they're starting to run out of gas here. It's Lumiere and Alone against the world. Neither one of them have their buybacks any longer, but the Stone Gaze does come through. They're trying to hold the line. Vitaly is going to be forced back. Tiaris is retreating as well. But they're not going very far. As soon as that's clear, as soon as the Stone Gaze comes to an end, they're right back in. They're looking for that no. final lane of Rax. And now the Medusa Illusions are going to create some trouble once again on that back line. They're able to clear through it fairly quickly, but it just feels like they're backpedaling every single time Hikori try to push their way forward, and Slowly but surely, those defenses are getting just torn away. Melee racks and very Kari. nearly down top. Ooh. And that's their last melee. I, ETRs might even want to just blink in, get it for free. You could even see the supports doing it at this point. Ooh. Anybody? Anybody want it? They'd rather go for the fight. Oh, alone. Okay. Simulates himself away, but that creates the opening TRs wanted. So they just wanted to be sure there was no chance of retaliation. They have taken down that final melee racks. There is still one ranged mid, but. They have some bigger issues right now. That's going to be a stun onto the Voice Spirit. They hit him up with the Abyssal, but the Dissimilate, once again, gets him out of trouble, but it doesn't allow them to protect that last lane of Rax as they will lose it. The Megas have been acquired, and now here comes Sikori back wow. in. They get the Cataclysm down. Lumiere's dead. He does now have his money and cooldown for buyback, though, so he can get back into the fight. They absolutely need him here. But the Tier 4s are under attack. Will they make a go at it? They're going to try to push their way forward. Sacred? Tried to move in with a loan. They do get a little bit of damage here, but now Lumiere back into the fight. Even with the BKB on, it doesn't protect against that taunt from the call. So he is sort of locked down. He's going to get hit by the tornado as well. And I don't really know what's going on with this fight anymore. It looks like it's just going to be Hikori pulling back. They will play it safe, or maybe not. Vitaly blinking forward, getting the taunt, pulling a loan away from the fight. The Dissimulate, though, should keep him safe. And as a matter of fact, rather than staying safe, they're actually going to try to push onto the Wyvern. They do manage to lock him down. Good catch by Michael, realizing Gardic was still waiting in that tree line. And they are going to be able to take him down, but at this point, it just really doesn't feel like it's enough. They've lost all of the racks. The Megas are going to be coming in. Their buyback statuses are practically non-existent. And Hikori's lineup right now just feels a little bit too strong. And they are trying to make a play onto Alone. They hit him up with a disruption, but Analog can't connect with the Tornado. So Infamous live to fight another day, but it is going to be so, so difficult for them to get this done. And the only thing really keeping them in the game at this point is the fact that Tiaris doesn't have enough room in his inventory to get a nullifier. These Aeon Discs have been so crucial with not losing the Dark Seer and the Void Spirit too early on, but I don't think they've got very much time left here. You need to have enough gold for this Rapier coming in from Lumiere. It really feels like that is your last shot in this game. You can get the Rapier, maybe overextend on the Anti-Mage a little bit, make sure you find that punishment. Otherwise, this game is most likely going to end pretty soon here. All it takes is one pick, maybe on the Darkseer, maybe on the Void Spirit. If they can get one of those heroes, it is going to feel like the game is more or less over. Even alone, you don't have that Dissimulate stun left. You need a lot of these 25s to come out from these heroes. It would actually do so much. The Parallel Wall specifically, the stun coming from the Dissimulate, you're just not going to get good levels anymore. All the XP is going to be split every single way with these Mega Creeps and Hikori are just going to be waiting for the pounce in these side lanes. They just have too many initiators. 
Yeah, just... At this point... Yeah, I mean, who on their team can't force a fight, right? Widge can get in there with the disruption, with the, uh, with the purge. He's even got himself a scythe of vise, for God's sake. So, he can make the jump. Gardic can hit you up. Vitaly obviously can jump in. Analog and... Uh, excuse me. Uh, analog and TRs really don't have to be all that afraid of the response either. So, anyone at any time could jump in onto anyone on the Infamous side, and Infamous are going to be hard-pressed to defend themselves. That is the nature of the game right now, but... Who knows? Maybe the Rapier is enough, but Lumiere's got to buy more time to pick it up. But even then, you're looking at... Maybe not a miracle, but something going your way. But this isn't good. Roshan is going to get taken. And I believe what will be Triple Cataclysm is also on the table here now, where if you stand still for a second, post these Aeon Discs, you are just going to die. It is not going to be that's, fun. That's gross. That, that, that should not be allowed. Yeah, Triple Cataclysm. How... What, what do you do? Move constantly, all the time, no matter what, but then that's kind of hard. Hikori have the lockdown, so... This is going to oh. require nearly a miracle out from the infamous side, but they start things off with a decent sort of move there, dodging the initiation from Vitali. so... Come just look at their buildings. They're a lot stronger than their towers at this stage of the game, and every single Shadow Demon disruption is going to be more chip, and they don't have Glyph for another 25 seconds, There's something rapier, that will be fixed though. pretty soon. Yeah, he had to but, sell some oh, items for no. it, but... The Courier actually the courier. went to the other secret shop, so it's got a long path back, and it's... Oh, no, no. In the That, uh, that, I think that might be it. What unbelievable misfortune there for Infamous. He doesn't see the Creek Wave in time. And now, I don't know if they can do it without the Rapier. They're just going to get taken down here. There's the jump in from Vitali. Eh, Lumiere, oh, I mean, no. he's given it his best shot, popping the BKB. But once that wears off, I'm not really sure if they can hold the line. Vitali, though, hit up by the normal punch. Going to get pushed away. They drop down the wall into the vacuum. That's going to connect on the two. Vitali losing about half of his HP, but he's back up. BKB activated. TRS, meanwhile, clears with the tier fours. They have now exposed that Ancient, but they want the kills instead. Lumiere locked down right away. Meanwhile, the Axe... Did he buy his own rapier, or did he pick that one up? I'm not really sure, but it's not going to matter much. The GG will be called. And, uh... Maybe it could have happened, but that Courier dying just saps all of the hope out from the infamous lineup and Hikori got to give credit to them they put together a fantastic performance and they have taken the 2-0 sweep and they take that top or not top spot but that upper bracket spot with the victory yeah and just the depth in the strength that Hikori have done and both of these teams something to really take note of is that they work with this last pick so well i think a lot of these teams that have successfully been able to get two o's in this tournament have shown that they can play both drafting styles they can take you to those best of three situations where it's okay if, if every single team wins the game they have first pick that's fine but once we get into these best of threes the teams that can play to both advantages are the teams that you're actually going to see succeed and actually get pretty far in this tournament and i think a Corey here perfectly played they had a really strong draft they had really good ideas coming into it and infamous they had their timing they had that one push mid they had their several not even several they had their one aegis where they were actually able to push onto the enemy high ground get the mid racks they stay for a second too long and we've seen this heartbreaking story several times whether it's versus the medusa versus the anti-mage versus what could even be the luna where your carry is up and ahead you're further on than the enemy teams is but you lose one fight and that is the game right there in front of you. You had some fantastic performances, specifically coming in from Vitaly. He found so many key calls. And it feels so bad if you're infamous because you had these sick plays in the early game. First 25 minutes, you had these three-man vac walls. You had these sick tossback baits where it felt like infamous were in the driver's seat. But one fight. That's all it can take when you play with carries these big. That's all it takes for you to completely flip the script in the draft, in the game. And from that point on, we really never saw Infamous. While they were trying to fight, they were trying to contest for area. They were constantly losing ground. That's just the nature of their draft. They lost their moment. And just how much to say other than that. And who knows what that rapier could have done. Would have loved to see it just for the sort of entertainment factor. But... That's what happens. They were sort of microwing that courier for so long, they take their eyes off of it for just a second, like one second, and it flies oh, over and the they did get wave. it. They did get it. Michael, he actually went in the creep wave. He he hand-delivered the rapier to Lumiere, but he died instantly. 
he died to the mana void without any recourse. Mm -hmm. So that's why you saw it swap over. It just didn't matter. That was their play. It just wasn't enough. Well, Infamous gave it a good go. Some solid performances from them. It's just a little bit better from the side of Akori, I think. Infamous maybe missed a timing or two, but uh, this isn't a scenario where they just get sort of blown out. So maybe they can sort of take that as a silver lining, but it is an unfortunate 0-2 loss here. Uh, really at the very end of the group stage. So with this result, Hikori do lock down their spot. They are top four. They'll be starting in the upper half of that playoff bracket, while Infamous uh, will be starting down below. So not a lot of room for error on that Infamous side, but I think at this point, after a match like this, they know what sort of went wrong for them, and I think they're probably going to come into the next series, that first playoff series, looking to immediately sort of make a statement and prove a point that we dropped the ball this time, but we know how to fix it, and we'll make those sort of adjustments uh, for their next appearance. Yeah, and we'll have to see what they are able to pull out, because now, the Corey, they've got a lot of rivalries. They've got a lot of matchups that played on earlier in this group stage that now they're going to be up against the big boys. They really have to prove themselves, even though I think being in the upper bracket right now is already proving a lot. I mean, if you looked at the lineups or the uh, roster of the squads that were playing in this, I don't really think a lot of people would have put Hikori uh, up in that top four. Of course, there are some extenuating circumstances. Beast Coast kind of comes to mind with their situation with players uh, not really being sort of well enough to play some of those games. But even with that aside, Hikori, a team that a lot of people look at as a sort of up-and-coming team, but this moves beyond up-and-coming into they're looking for their chance to really just ascend entirely and, and make a statement. So... We'll see how that first upper bracket series goes for them. If they can't win it, then you have a fallback plan. You go down to the lower bracket, we'll see how they perform there. But they are looking really good. With this lineup, there were some concerns when Tiara sort of joins in Lumiere's place. But a little bit of vindication here. You had those two carries go directly up against each other in this matchup. And Tiara was the one to walk away with the win. Yeah, and just want to see what else the squad can do. They're really proving to be one of these stronger, I don't even want to say up and coming. They play so much Dota. They played, I think, six games today. They're playing some other random tournament. So they're just a really cool team to watch. Yeah, just putting their nose to the grindstone, as it were. So congratulations to Corey. We'll be checking back in on them when the playoffs begin, which I believe is two days from now. There is an off day uh, tomorrow. So with that, uh, I believe we are done. We had just the last two uh, best of twos to get through today. So ET and I are done for group stage. We will be back later in the playoffs, of course. But uh, I believe for the first day of playoffs, you are going to have uh, our Cryptic and Neff back on the mic uh, for you guys. So we will be shutting down. Before we go, though, I do want to say something on a sort of personal note. Um, the... Matches on, I believe it was Thursday, there were some issues with the stream, if some of you probably saw it or heard about it. Um, that was on my end. There was a severe thunderstorm in my area, it knocked out internet, and that is why that happened. We missed a lot of one of the games, we were able to sort of get it back up and running to finish out the day, but um, that was something that was sort of on my end. So I know a lot of people were giving BTS crap about that, but... It was on me, it was on the weather, can't control the weather sometimes, I don't have that power unfortunately, but I just wanted to clear that one up and apologize to people, because we didn't really get an explanation out, or I didn't immediately. That is what happened, I apologize for that going down, but we did the best that we could to try and get through it, and hopefully uh, no more massive thunderstorms moving forward. So just wanted to clear the air on that one and clarify what went down. So thank you all for that, I know... Probably a lot of people don't care. You missed out on Dota anyway, and I do apologize for that, but there's uh, the reasoning for it. But thank you all for listening to my long-winded rambling about the weather and why it sucks, but that is going to do it for today. Final day of the group stage, done and dusted. Congratulations to Hikori once again. I'm going to be moving on to that playoff bracket. So, ET, we are done. Thank you as well for sitting through my explanation too. Uh, anything you want to say to the folks before we go? Uh, just make sure to tune in to our playoffs, especially those loser brackets. There's a lot of fun games to be played, a lot of uh, good games to be played. And really, whoever gets to win here, whether that's going to be uh, what could be the front runner of the tournament being Undying, or if we're going to see some dark horse come up through the shadows, there are a lot of cool teams still at this tournament, still a lot of Dota to be played. So make sure to keep tuning in. Yeah, we move into higher stakes stuff now with Elimination uh, on the line. So again... 
playoffs will begin on the 18th, and you will have uh, our Cryptic and Neff for that first day. So for now, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Monday, and we will see you next time on BTS. Thank you very much.